Hi, my name is Divya. I am a final year PhD student in uh, Earth Science Department working in Planetary Science. And I specifically work on volcanoes that existed on the moon. So I've just got one slide and a couple of cartoons in here. So uh, it's quite straightforward. The first one that we are looking at in here is how the moon was formed, which was around 4 billion years back. So the moon was supposed to have formed from a collision of a Mars-sized impactor called Tia with the then Earth called the Proto-Earth, which was not at all evolved like what we live right now. And this giant impact, that collision, resulted in a lot of debris, especially from the Thea, to be distributed you know, around the Earth and just scattered around the Earth. Now the gravitational pull of the Earth, because it's such a massive body, resulted in all of that debris to be accumulated into a pile, a big, you know, ball of just debris, just random rocks and dust particles. And that, in the rest of the billions of years, resulted in the formation of the now Earth and the Earth's moon. So our moon is the only moon that is called the moon. For all the other planets, their moon have got a name. So that's Earth and that's the Moon. Now, yeah, I mean, I started this PhD wondering, oh, why am I even doing a PhD on Moon? Like, there are real life problems in the world and then, yeah, but I still do not know the answer to that question, but I know that if we have to know the, you know, geological settings of the Earth, such as volcanoes that exist on the Earth or plate tectonics on the Earth, we have to look back 4 billion years as to how this plate, these plates on the Earth formed. Now the thing is, when the Earth and the Moon first formed after you know, all of this collision and all of that, the Moon did not have any source of oxygen or water or an oxidizing environment to change its then system. Whereas the Earth had a lot of organic content, water, oxidizing environment, evolve it into the now existing Earth. So whatever was the geological history four billion years back, we don't have any remnants or any sort of evidences from those four billion years back. So if we have to look at the history of the Earth, we will have to look at the Moon because it's preserved that history. So thanks to no plate tectonics or no source of oxygen or water on the moon, it's all still intact. But the thing is, I don't know how many of you have observed, when you look at the moon at night, do you see any sort of color change at different parts of the moon? Do you see some areas are dark gray, some areas are light gray? You might be surprised to know that those dark gray regions on the moon are places where there used to be volcanoes. So, like four billion years back, if you looked at the same moon, you could have seen like fireworks in the sky at those places. So my aim is to look at those rocks that are brought back by astronauts from, from the Apollo missions of NASA around 50 years back and identify how these volcanoes erupted. So of course people go back to the moon, bring back rock samples. I look at these rock samples through a microscope when some, most of my friends look at the moon through a telescope. And we check these different minerals that are crystallized in the moon to see what the formation conditions were. So checking on the interdisciplinary factors, I must say that geological sciences or planetary sciences is one discipline that takes into account physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, and of course now in the recent times, computational modeling to reconstruct environments. So the whole of the solar system is our laboratory and what we do on that is the result we get out of it. So my work is to create a thermometer which can, like just how we use a thermometer to test our temperatures, a thermometer that can find, you know, that can be used on these minerals to tell me, oh, they were crystallized at such and such temperatures. Which means if I know that, I can say, oh, this volcano might have formed at so-and-so temperatures. So that's the whole point. And 
Yeah, with respect to public engagement, I make such cartoons, illustrations of big rocket science and, te you know, uh, usually tell it to children through pu public engagement activities and outreach events. Uh, through the department as well as through the Manchester Museum because they've got this amazing collection of meteorites and space rocks in the museum as well. So yeah, that's me. Thanks. Questions? Anybody, any questions or thoughts or comments? Um, <laughs> just because it's about connecting people up. So I'm in the space research group in the Aerospace oh. Engineering School. Yeah. And I know part of the robotics team there have looked at designing different types of rovers that could go yep. down lava tubes and all that kind of stuff, because obviously wheel vehicles can't. Right. And I just wondered if you had connection across them, because since I've been at the university, I know it's everything is separate. Yeah, we haven't had uh, collaborations or connections with the team, but our group is quite interdisciplinary. We have now, so um, the moon had several, we had several sample return missions from the moon. The Apollo missions of the NASA, Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, except for 13, which was which is supposed to land on the moon, but couldn't land because of technical issues. It had to go all the way around the moon and then come back home. The six missions were the only crewed missions of, you know, sample return. Those were the only missions that took humans and brought back samples. We have the Chang'e mission of the Chinese National Science Administration, which brought back samples using a robot. We had the Luna, three lunar missions of the Soviet Union that brought back samples through robots itself. Now, all of this happened in the span of 1960s to 1970s, within, say, 10 years, within a decade. And the last mission that brought back was a robotic mission. So, we haven't had any collaborations with the um, with the team, the robotics team yet, but it's, the, I mean, our planetary science department in the university is just expanding. We are still just looking at rocks that are brought back. I think we, it's high time that we look into more of the, you know. Because they're now looking at in situ. Yeah, analysis. exactly, yeah. 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 Um, so I hope can you like yeah, use that information, like this uh, history of this uh, volcano, I mean, the change in the volcano. I, I've seen your, Work uh, back in the summer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you won uh, the best picture. Oh, yeah, image. that's this picture. If you look yeah. closely, it's in the shape of a heart. It was really. Inside, an, it's got another heart inside. So that dark gray is a mineral, and that light gray is another mineral. So they both formed at different conditions. So I used to say, oh, to the to the moon and back, I don't know if my, if any of you got heart in So I'm like, yeah, that's what I present Yeah, so I'm, I'm just like, if you can, just like a little bit give us a thought. Picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. Oh, that, yes. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I was casually looking at, you know, there are times in your PhD when you lose that motivation to like, it's not happening, I'm not reaching there yet. And then you get, you know, stuck with this picture like that. When I was looking through the um, spectroscopic instrument and I'm like, whoa, that looks like a heart. And I was like, that's so cool. Like, how can you crystallize a heart-shaped mineral like that? It was, I mean, I've got teddy bears and I've got several other stuff as well, but yeah, that was the motivation. Um, you just mentioned spectroscope. What kind of techniques do you look at? Because I assume it's more than just like, microscopes. So what, yeah. what kind of things do you use, and is that different from like Earth geology? Ah, uh, yeah. So the, the, there's still a time when you cannot go to the moon and collect rocks. So you look at like satellite images of the entire surface of the moon, and you have you can have like a thermal screening of the whole of the moon. So you can't, like you pointed out, sometimes you can't dig into the center of the moon and check what the core of the moon is formed. But now you have these tools which can give you a total thermal modeling of the um, surface which you can't reach and give you imprints of what the chemistry, physics, dynamics looks like. For, I don't look at the entire global spectrum, instead I look at just samples, you know. We have a rock like that from the moon. We make thin sections of that rock and you put it through a microscope and you look at, oh, cute little minerals formed over there. So uh, for that I use a normal optical microscope, number one. Number two that I use is a scanning electron microscope. And the third one that I use is an electron probe, which sends in, you know, electron rays and gives back the chemistry of the mineral. So that's what I use as a thermometer to check the temperature of that mineral.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.